Hello and welcome to Focus on L'Oreal UNESCO for Women in Science Week, a five-day event organized by the L'Oreal Foundation in Kigali, Rwanda, as part of its initiative to support, award and celebrate women scholars of sub-Saharan Africa. I'm Riddhima Shukla. Stay with us to learn about the interesting work being done by these leading ladies and how the initiative is empowering them in their journey. Women scientists make up less than 30% of the world's researchers, and this gender gap has worsened after the COVID pandemic. While policy plays a vital role in enhancing the visibility and contribution of women in science, there are also other barriers that hinder their growth. And we were joined by two women in science laureates to tell us about their own experience with cultural and institutional bias. During my career, I faced many challenges. First of all, the vis you, you, are, you are lacking visibility because you will meet obstacles that can hamper your career. For example, you have to take care of the children, you have to take care of the family. You look, you see that in those fields, the number of women is decreasing compared to the number of men. Because usually the age you start the master's is the age where you have to start your family and you have to choose between them and sometimes it's a, a difficult, difficult choice. So we need to give voice to African scientist women to, to be able to do what they, they can do, what they are able to do by giving them the voice to talk. Two former women in science laureates, Catherine Nigilla and Agnes Binaguaho, joined the conversation to share their experience as veterans in the field and the progress made in advancing the agency of women in science. So for what we can see in women, uh, we are not educated to be upfront. We are educated to serve. We are born the daughter of this man. We are the wife of this man. We are the mothers of those children. We are not ourselves, and we are educated like that. So this is the difference because, uh, because men are very uh, spontaneous. They simply do what it is that they want to do. But therefore, women are waiting to be told, now you can go. So what can we do to change that? Uh, this is basically to expose women, to mentor them, uh, to give them uh, access, opportunities. And when we do that, it is, they are now going to start flourishing. The, the why we don't have uh, access to Nobel Prize is because the jury is not uh, in parity. Mm -hmm. And men who are member of the juries are biased by their own culture. Mm -hmm. So we know, for example, when it's blind, more women uh, got awarded. When it's open and they see a woman, there is a bias. When you have more women in leadership position, your business make more money. When you have more women in research team, your team has more outcome. It's like women are making the team more intelligent. It's proven. There are research that prove that. So if they want really to make the world better, to have better outcome, to make more money, they will select more women in leadership position. And so when you, when you are in a group and you find you are alone, you tend to shy and eventually you give up. And so this is what used to happen before. And because of these stereotypes, uh, that was discouraging. The stereotypes now have less. Because as women started going up, and also many women started getting, there was a lot of campaign. To address the key disadvantages and skill gaps faced by women in science, the convention offered several training programs to the 40 awardees of the 12th edition of the Foundation L'Oreal UNESCO for Women in Science, Young Talents Awards for Sub-Saharan Africa. We spoke to some of the awardees about the training programs organized during the event, and this is what they had to say. I attend the negotiation, and I like it, really, because we need it not in about our, our professional life, but even our social life, because every day I think we are negotiated. And from today, I learn and I got some keys that I can use for my social and my professional life. And it feels even much better to be here and learn about new skills that we are going to use for our future career. And then it's also good because by doing that, we gain more confidence about everything that we study. And then when we go back to our own country or region, 
we represent we are like real model for other people other young generation that look up to us and maybe it will be uh, an example for other aspiring young women who want to do sciences to show that they can be capable they can be achieved they can even get awards and also i can be a role model for young uh, young girls who want to do all, all those uh, STEM sciences, for example, mathematical, biological, and so on. After hours of workshops, discussions, and training sessions, the five-day event approached its finale with a panel discussion between leaders in government, scientific research, and a global initiative to discuss research in Africa and the role of women scientists. So the numbers speak for themselves. When we look at women scientists in the world, they are 33%. 15% of leadership position in science are occupied by women. The COVID crisis has been a major backlash in women's rights all around the world. Early child marriages, because people couldn't feed their children. We know that women got more often unemployed, more women getting into poverty. The numbers went up, unfortunately, in all countries. The invisibilization of women scientists that is at the origin of this program was also operating during COVID crisis. So there has never been a better moment to organize a young talent award ceremony in Sub-Saharan Africa than this time. When we look to an, a scientific institutional point of view, how can you in your place and how can scientific institutions promote uh, girls and women in science? We've got an opportunity uh, through the affiliates program where we can be able to, and in fact, uh, we do use that uh, more or less a strategy or if you like affirmative action, where we would, put, um, would want to make sure that if we have got 100 applica applicants and uh, we want to take 100, so we would want to aim to have 50% girls and 50%, um, not girls, but young uh, female researchers and uh, young male researchers. Uh, then from there, we hope that um, by electing the affiliates or appointing the affiliates, they will be mentored through the programs that we have so that they can get to the level of being elected as women uh, fellows. You see a job application. A woman will go through, if there is 10 criteria, will go through the 10 list to ensure that she meets the qualification. The man will look at the 10 list. The first one, if he meets, he says, now I can qualify. This job is mine. So, um, so this is the difference because women, the men are daring and women always have to be very careful. I face a lot of challenges. It was a little room, a small room with six different girls. And my dad was worried. I was like, are you sure you can live here? I said, oh, this is like the paradise for me, you know. I, I finished the master and I was actually the best. And I started my PhD and today... Bravo. And today I went back to that department and, and I'm a part-time lecturer in the same department where the secretary told me that... <laughs> What is the one advice that you would like to give or to other girls or to other women uh, in order to pursue a science career? This is the message I always give to uh, young women uh, who, are trying, who are in science or even other subjects. Just first, you have to be, you have to prepare your own philosophy. What do I want to be? Where do I want to go? And you will get there eventually. Thank you. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, the one advice. Um, to the elder women scientists, be role models to the younger ones, mentor them, and to the young talents, be committed, faithful, and always, always be resilient because the road is not uh, that straight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Lini, you are an expert in resilience too. Um, so what do you want to share with uh, your colleagues, with us, uh, about what the world needs from us all to allow girls and women to succeed in science? Um, I would say a change in perspective. 
in how everyone sees a woman, what we think a woman can do, what we think a woman should say, should walk, what we think a woman is. I think when we start to, like Dr. Umawaria, Uma, Uma sorry, said yesterday, we start them small, that when you raise your child um, and raise them to know that they can do anything, they grow up to do anything. And I'm a living testament of that. Um, I was raised to uh, believe that I could be anything, I could go anywhere. And I've been to many places and I've done things, not a lot, but I've, I'm doing things I feel. So I think it's a change of perspective, especially in our African community. We need to see women differently when we, we need to value them and, and see the impact that they can have in our society. Um, all I can say is um, just test us and, and see, you, you, because we can, you know? So for me, it's mainly for parents. Yeah. It's the first time to be under the roof in the same, the same place with the females that are holding PhDs or doing PhDs, postdocs. Actually, that was amazing and right? it was so emotional and it was a very exciting experiment. I learned a lot and it was really touching. Women are severely and disproportionately underrepresented in the fields of STEM research. And it's not the lack of competence, but several qualitative factors that obstruct them from reaching leading positions in science. Unfortunately, this gender gap persists across various fields, but with the right support and direction, these Laureal Laureates are claiming their space as leaders, pioneers, and icons. This was Focus on Laureal UNESCO for Women in Science. Thank you for watching.